My name is Luca Bear, I'm the science coordinator on the beautiful Aldabra Atoll. And I'll be talking to you today a bit about the atoll itself, what we have here, and then running through a bit of our turtle monitoring programs. Aldabra is one of the largest raised coral atolls in the world and is part of the Seychelles Outer Islands. It is about 1,000 kilometers southwest of Mahe and around 400 kilometers north of Madagascar. The Seychelles Islands Foundation has managed and protected the atoll since 1979, and that's who I work for, and we continue to conserve and study all the species that call out Abraham. Despite its size, Aldabra has been relatively left alone by humans for most of its history, which means many unique and special species have actually survived and thrived here. This includes perhaps the most emblematic species found on Aldabra, the Aldabran giant tortoise, which is the last remaining giant tortoise in the Indian Ocean. All the rest have gone extinct, unfortunately. We have over 100,000 on the atoll, and it's the largest population of giant tortoises anywhere in the world. The atoll also supports a wide range of shorebirds and landbirds. This also includes the Aldabra white-throated rail, which is the last living flightless bird in the Indian Ocean. Unfortunately, all the others went extinct, like the dodo. There's also a vast array of seabird species. including one of the largest frigate bird colonies on the planet. <laughs> the wondrous species found on land are only outdone in beauty and abundance by those in the marine environment. The atoll contains a diverse variety of marine habitats a large extent of mangroves found all around the inside of the atoll and then there are extensive seagrass beds supporting what we're here to talk about a large turtle population and then the atoll is fringed by rich coral reefs that support an abundance of fish these in turn then support an array of top marine predators and because the atoll has been protected for so long, it's a haven for long-lived fish species that are often in decline elsewhere on the planet. The lagoon is also one of the defining features of the atoll itself, being one of the largest in the world. One of the most endangered species that utilizes the lagoon is the dugon. It's the last remaining population in the Seychelles and probably one of the most secure areas for them to exist in the Western Indian Ocean. Last but not least, Aldabra is also home to one of the largest green turtle nesting populations in the Western Indian Ocean. It is actually the longest protected nesting area in the region and it now has a thriving breeding population of around three to six thousand females nesting annually. However, until the establishment of the research station in 1971, when the atoll became truly protected, turtles were being harvested in large numbers. It was actually reported in the early 1900s that 12,000 were taken in one year. I'm a bit skeptical about that, but generally several hundred were harvested annually. It got to the point by the 1960s where it was extremely rare to see even one green turtle emerging onto Settlement Beach, as you can see from this old footage with no turtles. Whilst graceful in the water, turtles are extremely vulnerable on land. They struggle to move and move very, very slowly, much slower than giant tortoises. This, coupled with the fact that their size, meant they were harvested extensively for their meat. The nesting process for a green turtle all in all, it takes several hours, which again contribute to their vulnerability while on land. 
The first stage involves digging down into the sand, what we call a body pit, until she's about level with her shell with the sand. They then dig out the egg chamber with their back flippers, slowly digging down about 50 centimeters, into which they'll lay about 100, 120 eggs. They then camouflage the nest, flinging sand to cover it, slowly moving forward so the true nesting site is well hidden. Green turtles have been recorded to lay up to nine clutches a season, coming ashore every two weeks to do so. So the big question you're probably all asking yourself is how do we keep track of the turtle population on our Dabra? And the answer is simple really. We count the tracks on the beach. So each time the turtles come up at night, you know, we can follow that track where they've come up and by counting them, we can track the population change over time. You can see in this video here that I'm just drawing a line across the track and that's so the person the next day knows that that track uh, has already been counted. Uh, you might ask why we don't actually count the nests. Um, not every turtle that comes onto the beach actually makes a nest and lays eggs. Some come just to have a look around, scouting where they could lay, whilst others attempt to nest but they don't quite find the right spot and head back to water. So you can see that to properly count the number of turtles coming on shore each night, using tracks is the best and frankly the simplest method. Every morning on Aldabra, a ranger walks the two kilometers of settlement beach, which you can see here in the video, counting all the turtle tracks left behind the night before as they go. The ranger also notes whether the turtle nested or attempted to nest, or whether it was just coming to look around for a potential nest site. We also take the GPS coordinates of where the up track of the turtle was, as we're interested in accessibility. Now here in this video, you can actually see a nest from above, and I'm just drawing the outline of the camouflaged area where the turtle flung the sand to hide the actual egg chamber. And so here, where I draw the circle, that's where she probably actually laid. But she ended up some three or four meters in front of me, look where those shadows are. As I rather foolishly demonstrate, she camouflages and ends up in this body pit there. And then that is her nest complete. So, so we have to assess each turtle emergence, each track, to see if the turtle actually nested. So we do record whether it's nested, whether it just came on shore, but we're recording all emergences to, under to understand how many are coming each night. Then of course you've seen me just draw a line through the track so the person the next day is sure that's already been counted. Now let's watch a section of the beach speed it up to understand the process. So you can see here that I'm sort of moving backwards and forwards a lot in one section and that's when we get a lot of turtles emerging in one area it's difficult to tell which track leads to which nest etc. So just take some time to figure that out. You're probably wondering how all this data then feeds into tracking the population. And this is the graph that really illustrates it. So what we have is years across the bottom and you can see the program was started in, the tracks monitoring program was started in 1981. And then we're actually plotting against, it's the settlement beach, the average daily emergence. So that's taking all the track counts for a whole year, dividing it by 365, the number of days in a year. And then we get a number to see what the average number of turtles coming up onto the beach each year. And what this graph really shows is the incredible increase since monitoring began in 1981. Now you can see a few gaps in the data in the 80s and early 90s, and that's to do because um, there wasn't a whole year's data set, so we couldn't have confidence in that. But the key issue here is that if you look in 1981, the average daily emergence, the, you know, the average number of turtles coming ashore on Settlement Beach each day was around three. When you look at 2018, that was 26 turtles every day on average. Now that it is an average and it hides the fact that we do have a peak nesting period between February and April. And in fact, we just, we've just gone through our peak nesting period this year. It peaked in March and we had the highest number of tracks ever recorded for a month ever since 1981, since records began. 
and we had on average over 50 turtles a night for the whole month coming on shore to nest. So it's been an incredible recovery and in fact it's nearly a 500% increase in the number of turtles coming onto Settlement Beach every night since 1981. So an incredible turnaround. Now we monitor the tracks on Settlement Beach every day, but we also have about 22 smaller beaches just south of the research station running along the western coast of the atoll. So at least four times a month, two rangers go out in a little boat and cruise down this coast and count all the tracks from the boat. Um, and they only record the very fresh tracks, the ones that were left the night before. So as you can see here, there was four tracks on the beach, on that last beach. But so that's actually where a turtle's gone up and come down. So that would be two turtles. It takes a little while to get used to it, but it's a wonderful trip when the sea's calm. We have recorded quite a large increase in the number of tracks on these western beaches but nothing like Settlement Beach where we walk every day and that's inherently due to the fact that the main human settlement was right on that main turtle beach so that got hammered the hardest rather than these smaller beaches further south. We also run a tagging program on our Dabra so four or five times a month we go out at night and actually tag the nesting females by placing a small metal tag in the pit of their front flippers. Now we always wait until they've finished the nesting process and are camouflaging so not to disturb them. Each of these tags has a unique number which then allows us to uh, track individuals over time and we take measurements of their shell or carapace so we can see how turtles develop as they age. The Aldabra turtle population is recovering extremely well from the pressure of harvesting in the 20th century. However, it now faces a new threat and one that SIF on its own can do nothing about, marine debris. Here you can see images from the south coast where there is literally tons and tons of plastic washing ashore every year. We estimate about 60 tons. Most of this by weight is industrial fishing gear, so here we see a female turtle entangled in fishing line, binding round her flippers, and she's actually still alive. Even if we could remove the estimated 500 tons of plastic from the atoll, it is only treating a symptom of the problem and not the actual cause. We need to change our lifestyles and not depend so heavily on disposable plastics that are so easily thrown away. And the way we catch the majority of our fish has to change. We have to shift away from industrial scale fishing and return to small scale local fisheries to have a truly sustainable ocean environment. However, I think the key takeaway message from this presentation is the resiliency of the green turtle population on Aldabra. Despite all the over harvesting, and now these new threats, the population is continue to rise in. And that gives me great hope for the future.